the same. So hold on tight and follow real close. God is good and he's in control. Clap your hands like this.
day six of Kids of Integrity. Today we're going to finish off our word, obedience. All right, guys, it's day six, and we're talking about obedience. Now, this story is about Moses, and it comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 20. Now, Moses obeys, but only halfway. He doesn't listen to God's full instructions of what he should have done. So Moses was a good leader, and most of the time, he did exactly what God asked him to do. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and into the desert, just as God had instructed him. But unfortunately, when they got to the de desert of Zen, the people started to complain that there was no good food and no water to drink. Moses and Aaron prayed and asked God what to do. God promised Moses that if he gathered the people together and he spoke to the rock, God would make water pour from the rock for the people to drink. Now Moses did gather the people together, but instead of speaking to the rock, Moses hit it twice with his staff. Water did pour out, but God was very displeased as Moses did not obey his instructions completely. For this reason, God did not allow Moses and Aaron to take the Israelites into the promised land. This is the land that God had promised for them. This was a major discipline for Moses and Aaron, who had looked forward to seeing the promised land for 40 years. Have you ever been told to do something and you didn't quite listen. Here's some different things that maybe your parents have said. Maybe they haven't said those things exactly, but something close to it. Okay, as the parent, the parent says, don't drink that blue stuff in the bottle in the garage. The child says, but it looks like Kool-Aid. The parent says, that could be antifreeze in the bottle. What do you think would happen if you drank antifreeze chemicals? Uh-oh. Here's another scenario. The parent says, always get off your bike to cross the road. The child says, but it's such a bother to walk my bike across the road. The cars always stop for me anyway. The parent says, what could happen if a car didn't have time to stop? That mean, I mean, it could kill you. If a car hit you, you'd be hurt really badly. You don't want to take those chances. So if we listen to our parents, our parents are helping us so that we don't get hurt, right? Sometimes when we're younger, we don't think about those things. All right, here's another scenario. The parent says, don't touch the candle, please. The child says, but the flickering flame looks so interesting. I want to touch it. The parent says, what would happen if you did touch it? What would happen? We'd get burnt, wouldn't we? See, again, the parent is trying to protect their child. Let's try another one. This one says, the parent says, make sure you don't eat that green bar. The child says, but it looks just like the candy that Joey had. Why can't I try it? The parent says, the green bar could be mouse poison. Now, what do you think would happen if you ate mouse poison? Well, you know that mouse poison will kill the mice, right? So what do you think it's gonna do to you? All right, well, here's another story about obeying. And this one, um, the first one was about Moses. This one's about Noah. And Noah obeys a strange request. Okay, God had asked Noah to do a strange job. He asked him to build a boat when there wasn't even a lake or an ocean around. God told Noah that he was going to flood the whole earth with water. Think of, what if God told you right now, I need you to build a huge boat. A huge boat. You're like, um, well, where am I gonna put this boat? All I have is dry ground all around my house. That's gonna look kind of funny, right? I bet Noah was thinking the same thing. What? Why would I need a boat? 
So God told Noah that he was going to flood the whole earth with water. The boat that God asked him to build was to be huge. It was to be large enough to hold Noah and his family and also some of each kind of animal that lived on the earth. It may have seemed like a strange request from God, but Noah obeyed. Sometimes we, as your parents or your parents, ask you to do things you don't understand, such as don't touch that or don't play over there or you wonder why you have to obey, even though the request seems strange. It is still very important for you to obey your parents' instructions. Disobeying can be the difference between life and death. Um, for instance, I'm always telling my kids, you need to make sure you look both ways when crossing the street. You have to look both ways. A car could come, I mean, you could even look, and by the time you've looked back this way, a car could come around the corner. So we try to tell them, look both ways two times. Make sure there's no traffic coming before you walk across the road. But I don't let my kids cross the road unless I'm right there anyways. But just in case, in case a parent isn't right there beside you, we try to teach you early so that you don't get hurt. And Sometimes when we give you guys instructions, it's not to be mean or to hurt you. It's because we care about you and we want you to do the right things and we don't want you to get hurt and we want you to stay safe. Um, other examples of being obedient is clean your room the first time asked. That's a good way to be obedient or pick up your toys when you're asked to. So let's bow our heads, fold our hands, and repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, please send your Holy Spirit to help me be obedient to you, my parents and teachers. Amen. All right, stay tuned, and we will have um, another exciting thing to do after this okay guys so we've been talking about obedience well today we're gonna play a game and instead of Simon says it's gonna be mom says so I need my children two of my children the baby can't play she's only four months old so we'll have to do with Austin and Brooklyn come over Stand right in front of mommy. My feet are wet and cold because of the mommy. Right there. Right where I'm. No, right where I'm. All right, this is the game. Mom says we're going to practice being obedient. That means following directions and listening. Okay. If mom doesn't say and you do it, then you're out. And then the other person wins. Yes. So let's see. All right. First thing, mom says, go run around that tree four times. Faster, 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 faster. Stop. Oh, Austin stopped first. He is out. You guys need to come back here. You are not following directions. No, I Try it again. Brooklyn won that one. You gotta, you gotta be listening. Right? Practice our listening skills. Alright, ready? Mom says to do four jumping jacks. One, two, three, four. Done. Mom says to do five push-ups. One, two, three, four, five, done. Mom says to stand on your head. Wait, what? I can't do it. <laughs> oh, you cannot go over there and cheat. Uh, I can't. I can't do it. You can't do it? I can but aren't you willing to try? I can't. No, 
If you're asked to do things, you have to be willing to try at least. Try your best. Can't just give up. Okay, so Austin's going to try to do it on the trampoline. I only do it on here. You gotta do it, Buff. I'll give you guys a pa Oh, he kind of did it, didn't he? Okay, now my turn. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> the little sticks on there. Okay, guys, back over here. Hurry. Run. Three, two, one. Freeze. Run to the other side of the yard and back. Go. Brooklyn, did mom say to do that? Nope. I forgot. <laughs> you got to be listening. You got to listen to the whole thing I say. All right, Austin won that one. Mm -hmm. So, 1-1. One, one. You ready? Yeah. Mom says to jump on the swing and swing as high as you can go. Jump off of the swing? Get on the swing. Jump on the swing. Swing as high as you can go. Go. Everything I have 